Now, good afternoon, everybody. I'll tell you just one thing, and there's only one person who would have got me up here, and that was Tom. And that's the only reason that I'm standing here. On behalf of Tom's family, I would like to thank you all for joining them here today to celebrate the life of a remarkable man, a loving husband, dad, granddad, and great-granddad. Tom was born on the 4th of December 1931 to William and Mary O'Donoghue, Crowhill Lower, and was one of a family of 13. He started his school days in Mellory National School and very often walking barefoot across the fields in all types of weather. During these years, the family endured horrendous times in the struggle for Irish independence, in which their father was deeply involved, and also during the post-Civil War era. With a large family to be reared, their dad saw an opportunity in the timber trade, and that meant there was fuel needed in the form of charcoal at the time of the Second World War. So began the introduction for Tom and his brothers to hard work. During this period, they had some very hard times, but also very happy times. And boy, did they know how to enjoy the good times, with their father playing the fiddle or the bagpipes. In June 1944, disaster struck when their family home was destroyed by fire. Nothing was saved, resulting in the parents and children sleeping in the barns and the outhouses on beds of straw. With the help of wonderful neighbours and friends, the task of rebuilding their family home began. The family home was partially finished in January 1945, and Tom often recalled the pride on his father's face when he was again able to sit at his kitchen table. However, this happiness was short-lived as their father took ill and passed away on the 19th of January, 1945, at the young age of 47 and leaving a large family. Ten years later, tragedy struck again with the death of their wonderful mother, Mary, and she was only 55 years of age. And by all accounts, a woman of great courage and dignity and still spoken of to this day. Now the next chapter, Tom's music. Now I think nearly everything has been said about the music, but he came from a home where music, dancing and singing was a huge source of entertainment. His father was a fine fiddle player, his aunt Josie an accordion player, and other members of the family played with the Mellory Pipe Band. But I have to say, Tom's claim to fame was that of a gifted and a renowned accordion player. As father said, he played all over the country, from churches to dance halls, pubs, crossroads, or wherever there was a party. He played with White Heather Cayley Band and was later part of the Shreve Gould Trio, as Father Cure mentioned, with Bob Keane and Biddy Nugent. Together they played a huge part in the All-Ireland success of the Schlieve Goose set dancers, and he also played for Newcastle and Ballyduff dancers. And when Tom played the set, and as well I know it, there was nothing else in your mind, just get up and dance your heart out. Actually, on one occasion, when they were asked to perform on RTE, the crew had to ask Tom to remove his shoes because he was banging out the beat so loudly, it just didn't sound right. But I have one question. If I were to ask you, who is the Washford man who holds 15 All-Ireland medals under GEA rules? Could you guess? Yes, that of course is Tom, as a set dancing All-Ireland musician. <laughs> Uh, as Tom and his brother Billy were the only family members left in Capoquin, they enjoyed some wonderful years together and had endless stories of their days in Crowhill. 
There was only one slight problem, though, where they didn't sing from the same hymn sheet, and that was politics. <laughs> but we won't go there, only just to say that I'm sure Dad had a smile on his face, looking down on Tom with the red rose in his lapel, <laughs> so you can guess from there. One of the many highlights they shared together was following Washford Hurling. They travelled to every Washford match possible, with Rena at the wheel. The car boot resembled meals on wheels, and of course, they made sure they had their hip flasks. They were safely tucked away in the pockets, and when Washford scored a goal, the hip flasks came out. In fact, in Thurlis, Gerlach Nan, when passing the car boot feast, he was so fascinated that he even mentioned it on the Sunday game. Family was Tom's greatest love. In 1961, he met Breda, the love of his life, at a Legion of Mary meeting in the hall in Millery. They married on the 20th of August 1963 and became parents to Brendan, Adrian, Leslie and Daddy's girl Marcia. In time, the family grew with wonderful daughter-in-law Pauline and son-in-law Jimmy, who Tom always referred to as my right-hand man. In 1987, he became a granddad to beautiful twin girls, Lindsay and Donna, and grandson Owen in 1991. Thirteen years later, Oshin arrived, and followed four years later by Jack. But in 2015, Adrian arrived home with four more members. <laughs> Rachel with her three children, Letitia, Nathaniel and Leona. The Dundalks, Tom just call them. And we're not forgetting his great-grandchildren, Ryan and Lexi. Tragic days again came with the passing of Leslie in 1998 at the young age of 21. A cruel blow, but their strong faith got them through these dark days. Although Tom and Breda had hard times in their 61 years of marriage, they were rewarded in later years when Marcia and Jimmy, Jimmy built their home on Millery Hill. But Marcia was thinking ahead, knowing that a babysitter might be required. <laughs> and as the saying goes, they lived happily ever after. So just some of the highlights of Tom's life, his marriage to Breda, which spanned 61 years, the birth of his sons and daughter, his trips to Australia to visit his two brothers, Matt and Michael, the O'Donoghue family reunion in Capricorn in 1998, and his trip to New York to celebrate his Aunt Mary's 100th birthday. And now, Tom's last flight was at the age of 91 in a helicopter over the Copper Coast. And he was so enthralled with the beauty of the Waterford coast, for once in his life, Tom was speechless. <laughs> now, in conclusion, I wish to say, and I know Brendan and Adrian wholeheartedly agree with me, that Breda, Marcia, Jimmy, Ocean and Jack, you will have no regrets. You went to the ends of the earth to make Tom, to make sure Tom was lovingly cared for at home as was his wish. I know Tom will return that love by taking care of you all from his heavenly home. Last Monday, Tom took his final flight to heaven. Goodbye, Uncle Tom, and thank you for all the love you shared with us. Have a wonderful reunion with Leslie and all your family in heaven. Er yesh day, Gorevahanam Dinesh.